joining us now is one of those 10 senators who got back from the Polish border. West Virginia Senator Shelley Moore Capito, thank you so much for being here and welcome back to Capital Review. So you're the only senator from our region who got a firsthand look at the humanitarian crisis on the ground. I assume this had to be put together pretty quickly. How was this bipartisan trip organized and all set up on who would go and what the objective and goal of the trip would be? Well, we joined, I joined nine other colleagues from uh, all parties, including the independent party. Uh, Senator King from Maine is an independent. And so that I think adds to the strength of the delegation. And basically my involvement uh, in terms of where my area of expertise is, is on the appropriation side. We are appropriating a lot of dollars to this effort. And so this gives me good a good look and see. The other members were on Intelligence Committee or on Armed uh, Services Committee. And I think uh, the fact that we had 10 from, uh, from uh, different parties really uh, made an impression on the Poles, on the Germans, and uh, NATO, our NATO partners. And the, the, the mission was to hear from our military, our own American military, the NATO military, our diplomatic efforts, and certainly the humanitarian efforts that are, are ongoing with this terrible humanitarian crisis that Putin is put, putting everybody through with his um, unethical war that he's moving forward with. And the videos and pictures have been so heartbreaking just to see here on our TVs and phones. I can't imagine really what it was like to see in person. Walk us through that experience that you saw firsthand, seeing mothers and children who left everything, their homes, they said goodbye to their fathers and their husbands to fight in Ukraine. What was that like even to take in? Well, it's very powerful to, to go to the processing center to see 1,500 mostly women and children, some elderly, um, you know, sort of waiting for their next where they're going to land next and uh, we had a firsthand meeting with a young mother of a six and eight year old she said she her children are traumatized because of the ongoing sirens always constant 24 hours a day she left her husband her home her family she she kept saying all i want to do is is live in my home and live free and and be together as a family these are pretty basic human rights and uh, she's going to end up in the united kingdom uh, so I think a lot of it is just jarring. Uh, many people are being taken in by the Polish people. They have people coming to processing centers saying, I have extra beds or I have an extra room. We'll take a family. Uh, and so, you know, there's a good side of humanity that you see, but there's an actually heart-wrenching side to the story. And, and I think it's important for people to know that there's another 7 million people within the country of Ukraine that are displaced from their own home they can't live in their own homes anymore. So it's it's unimaginable, it really is. Yeah, I really can't believe this. So from your trip and just from your observations alone, what does Ukraine need the most right now? Well, they, uh, we met with some Ukrainian uh, mothers and women and uh, government officials. Basically what they need is uh, lethal and, and military weaponry. They need to be able to have anti-aircraft missiles. They need to have stingers and javelins, which we've provided but they implored us that we need them more and we need them quicker uh, in order to uh, keep Putin at bay. I mean, Putin has a big army. He's got a lot of equipment and he's got a lot of weaponry, but the Ukrainian people are incredible. They say they're gonna fight to the death. So they need our help as a NATO partner. We're providing that help uh, with our NATO partners uh, as well because uh, it's important for the protection of freedom in this, in this uh, sovereign land. Uh, and so uh, that's the message that we received pretty loud and clear. So following that, do you think the U.S. and our allies will be able to help end this war? And there's no question that we're, we are helping. Uh, we trained a lot of the Ukrainian troops that you see fighting now uh, in Europe uh, several years, you know, over the, over the years. Uh, we also have provided uh, intelligence. We've provided uh, weaponry. Uh, you know, we don't have boots on the ground in Ukraine, and we and we won't. But we've also been able to help them along with our European partners and our uh, NATO partners to be able to s strengthen the force in Ukraine and and kind of have their back in terms of uh, providing that weaponry. The most important thing is the uh, is the military help in terms of. Um, um, ammunitions and munitions that are so very important to fight back. And you know, you're talking about somebody, Putin, who will bomb hospitals, kill children with, with no regret. 
And uh, I think it's a, it's a brutal dictatorship that's something like we've never seen in my lifetime. And in many Europeans' lifetime, they never thought they'd see it again after World War II.